for being with me. If you remember, we had a press conference on Friday afternoon, and I told you that kids were killing kids, and that's not acceptable. And we're going to do everything we can because we'd rather the kids be alive in prison than dead on the street. Well, you don't have to call me a prophet, but once again, we had a kid killed this weekend, murdered, murdered in cold blood. Let me introduce you to our victim. This is Roderick Wilson, Jr. He's 20 years of age, just started life. His father, Roderick Wilson, Sr., is the minister, the preacher of Pentecostal Church of God on 34th Street in Inwood. Roderick, Jr. lives in an apartment on the church parking lot. And here's what we know at this point in the investigation. We know that Taekwon Cotton, who's 22, who's our murderer, drove up to the church and they had an initial confrontation out in the street where there was some pushing and talking and Roderick pulled his jacket off and then Quan drove away. Then we have video that shows that Quan drove back and in the parking lot of the church he and Wilson had further words and he shot and killed Roderick. The 911 call came in at 1.47 in the morning. We through our investigative means determined that the murder was actually at 51 minutes after midnight. So Roderick lay deceased in the parking lot of the church for almost an hour before a Samar good Samaritan drove by and noticed this young man laying in the parking lot with blood around and no one there and notified us. Well, let me tell you about Roderick for a minute. He's a good kid, no criminal history at all. He works at the church, working for his dad in the church, and he's solid. He's just a solid young man. And I think this picture of him and this picture of Quan compares and contrasts. Quan, on the other hand, has had 11 felony arrests, 6 misdemeanor arrests, a total of 17 criminal charges but yet he has no felony convictions. And he shoots and kills this young man, this solid, good young man. So our detectives, and I've told you before, our homicide team is simply the very best there is, started this investigation just as soon as they were called out early Sunday morning. And here's what we know. We identified the vehicle that Quan was in and our detectives working with Quan's mother, and I want to compliment Quan's mother. She was totally cooperative with us. She gave us leads on where we might find Quan. And we noticed and found Quan, who was not far from the original murder scene, and as we approached him to try to take him into custody, he ran. And he ran through the neighborhoods to Avenue V in Inwood. Well, as deputies and detectives were closing in on him, he ran up to a woman at her house and grabbed her by the throat. So now deputies and detectives are fighting with him in order to get him into custody. But that's not all. Guess who else was helping us fight and get Quan in custody? Quan's mother. In fact, Quan bit his mother during the fight. So finally we were able to wrestle him into custody. He made admissions to us. That's right. Quan did not give us a full confession, but he made incriminating statements to us. We still need to talk to witnesses. We know there were several cars that drove by. Why Quan and Roderick 
were having their original disagreement and shove and match, and then others drove by later. We want to talk to those witnesses. We also have not located the firearm. Listen to me, folks. We know that Quan passed this firearm off someplace. Now, firearms on the street go for about $300. Now, listen close. Make sure you don't have any earwax in your ears. I'm making you a deal you can't refuse. If this gun's been passed off to you, that's worth $300 on the street to you if you try to resell it. We'll pay you $5,000 for the gun. Did you hear what I said? We will pay you five grand. Now, don't go give us some old piece of junk gun and think you're getting five grand. We first got to match the gun to the evidence at the scene. And once we confirm that you've given us the actual firearm that Quan used to shoot this good young man to death in his daddy's church parking lot in the middle of the night, you'll get your money. And we'll have the gun another piece of evidence. That's right, we want to tie all the information together that we can. It's important to understand, as it was explained to us, that Roderick was a Christian boy, and he loved the Lord. Now, unfortunately, he got to see the Lord face to face a lot sooner than I'm sure he wanted to or should have. But we have to bring justice through our system to the Roderick Wilson Jr. family. We appreciate their cooperation. And I've got to tell you, I've got to wrap up by saying we appreciate Quan's mama doing the right thing. She was equally mortified that her son would shoot and kill someone. So with that information, understand that we still are wrapping up this case, which is pretty remarkable if you think about it. We get called, and maybe 12 hours later, we've identified the suspect. And then with the help of neighbors and mom of where he may be, we identify him. He's running. We catch up to him. He's holding a woman kidnapped. He doesn't know this woman, by the way. Total strangers. And mom's there helping us fight her son to get him in custody safely. And he bites his mama. What is he thinking? Well, he's not thinking. I just wish mama had bitten him back. But we bit him with the system. He's locked up in jail where he should be. And he's facing, among other charges, kidnapping, first-degree murder. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. Sheriff, just to clarify, it is unknown at this time why these two were out in the middle of the night in the parking lot and they didn't know each other before? That's correct. At this point in the investigation, there is absolutely no evidence that we're aware of that shows they had any kind of friendship, relationship. We have no idea. They both lived in the Inwood area, about a quarter of a mile apart. If there are witnesses that may know that there's a relationship of how one would have known the other, we would like to know that. But here's what we do know. This is a bad man. He did a bad thing. He had a good mama that helped us. But he's going to a bad man's jail, and then our goal is to send him to prison for the rest of his life for murdering a really good kid. Sure. Sure. Can you speak to Quan's mental capacity? Because he says some very bizarre things in first appearance. And he seems like he may potentially be mentally unstable. I'm no counselor or anything, but... <laughs> Certainly, people say bizarre things if they want to create a defense. So quite frankly, does he have mental health issues? I'm certain that his lawyers will go down that path. But we've also got to remember, a lot of these criminals play games with us. This is no game zone. We're going to lock you up. You can say all the craziness you want to say. But we know this. 
that not only did you fuss with him, not only did you shove each other around, but when he drove off, we have video of him coming back and circling the block and circling the block and circling the block, looking for our victim. And when he found our victim in the church parking lot, he got out of his car and shot him and killed him. So he can say all the crazy things he wants. But keep in mind, the law simply says that you had the capacity to understand what you did was wrong, and he certainly did that. And in my estimation, from the early information we have, which is always subject to change, he stalked this guy. Something in that first meeting they had on the side of the road in the middle of the night made him really, really mad. So he came back looking for Roderick so he could murder him. This was premeditated, and that's what he's charged with. Can I repeat that? Excuse me? When did that first confrontation between the two took place? The first confrontation happened just before 51 minutes after midnight. That's when, that's when we, the shooting occurred, and it would have been 10 minutes before that, probably someplace around 12.30 or 12.40. Pretty close because when, from the time he drove off to the time he came back it was only 10 or 15 minutes, and he had circled the block some. So did he have to go to his house, which was only a quarter mile away, to get the gun? Or was he just trying to build up his nerve? Or did he just drive away and think, you know what? I need to kill that guy. We don't know what he was thinking. We know that he had enough brain cells to commit murder. And we're going to try him and what few brain cells he has. Sheriff, does the suspect have any gang affiliation or ties? Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. We thought that Taquan Cotton was a gang associate. But we have now, in the last couple of hours, affirmed that he is, in fact, a gang member. And we were talking about gangs and guns on Friday afternoon, and here's your sign. Less than what? 48 hours later, we've got a gang member that's murdering a good kid. And he's 20 years old. He's only 22 years old. We're not going to let kids kill kids and certainly not get away with it. So we've got to stop that. That was the whole focus of our press conference on Friday afternoon when we caught these youngsters stealing guns to sell on the street to people like him, who in turn then shoot decent young men. Okay. Anything yeah. else? So on the gang affiliation, was that through prior arrest or was that through confirmed with detectives? It, the detectives confirmed it through, we have several steps we have to go through in order to move them from a gang associate to a gang member. And we put all that information together today. We started the day out thinking he was a gang associate. Now he's a gang member. And now he's in jail, like he's a arrested gangster. So would that up his charges then, because he's a gang member? That will, that will enhance charges. But once again, you can't enhance first-degree murder. It's already a captive felony. But at the end of the day, he thought it was cool to be in the gang. He thought it was cool to have a gun. He thought it was cool to shoot. And we got him on ice in the jail. See how that figures out for him. Okay. Thank you all very much. Have a good day.